Okay, so we got Tai Tuivasa versus Marcin Tybura in UFC's next main event happening later today. And what is going to happen in this fight? So let's go through the records really quick. Marcin Tybura, going back to 2020, beat Maxim Grishin with the decision, then he decisioned Ben Rothwell, then he beat up Dan Hardy, ultimately TKOing him in the late end of round number two. Basically just letting Dan or Greg Hardy tire himself out and then taking him down and ground and pounding him. And Greg Hardy didn't have his trusty inhaler, so he was too gassed to defend himself. Then he beats up Walt Harris in round one. Basically, Walt Harris comes out swinging hard. He gets tired. Tybura takes him down and finishes him with just under a minute left in round one. Then he fights Alexander Volkov. That was a close fight. Basically, Volkov just kind of outpointed him and was generally the better striker, defended a lot of Tybura's takedowns, and just was able to keep it on the feet and beat him up, beating him by unanimous decision. Then Tybura fights Alexander Romanov, and that was a fight that he was a huge underdog in. Romanov was undefeated coming into that fight, and essentially Romanov beat the hell out of Tybura in round one, and then got tired and... Tybura was able to just outpoint him in rounds two and three and win on the scorecards. There was a lot of consternation going into the decision because the commentary team thought that round one was possibly a 10-8 round, and it looks like one of the judges did score round one a 10-8, while the other judges scored it a 10-9, thus giving Tybura the majority decision rather than the unanimous. Then he fights, then he fights Blagoy Ivanov and beats him by decision. Then he fights Tom Aspinall five months later and basically just gets blown out of the water by Tom Aspinall's speed, getting knocked out in round one, just a minute into the fight. Let's go to Tai Tuivasa's record. So in 2020, he's coming in off of a three-fight losing streak. He knocks out Stefan Struve with a minute with a second left in round one. Then he knocks out Harry Hunsucker, just kind of, you know, easily beats him up. Then he gets rocked by Greg Hardy. Greg Hardy gets all excited, goes in for the kill, and Tai Tuivasa is able to just hit Greg Hardy with a punch as Greg Hardy's coming in and knocks him out there. So that was a, that was a really fun fight because both guys were rocked there. Then he knocks out Augusto Sakai, kind of just a ho-hum round one, and then just knocks him out really easily in round two. Then he fights Derek Lewis, gets his shit rocked in round one. He this that fight cemented tied to boss is one of the best chins in all of ufc Derek lewis also displayed some wrestling there and then in round two ty starts hitting him with some good punches and ultimately puts him down to the mat with an elbow a minute and 40 seconds in then he fights rogan basically just gets completely destroyed like his body is completely open for to get hit he has one moment in uh, i think it's round three where he knocks Cyril gone down to the ground but then Cyril comes, no, it was round two. He knocks him down. Cyril comes back with a vengeance. I still thought Cyril won the round. And then in round three, he just is destroying Ty, hitting him with head kicks, and then he finally puts him unconscious. Then Ty fights Sergei Pavlovich, just gets blown out of the water, a very similar to performance to what Aspinall did against Tibura. Just He just gets completely destroyed with Sergei's power, accuracy, and consistency in his punches. And then he fights Alexander Volkov, and I thought he just got completely dominated in that that fight, reminiscent of the Cyril Gaon performance where Volkov's just taking him down, landing brutal body kicks, landing brutal punches to his face, and then in the end he finishes it by via Ezekiel choke after completely dominating Ty. I know people were talking about Ty's leg kicks against Volkov, but... Really, every time he was throwing a leg kick, he was getting jabbed in the face and getting wobbled. So that was not a good showing. I know that Tai Tuivasa has said that he looked so bad against Volkov because he didn't have a camp to prepare for him. Well, now he's coming in against March and Tybura. And again, history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. We had Tai Tuivasa coming in to 2020 off of a three-fight losing streak. And now, four years later, he's coming into 2024 off of a three-fight losing streak. Let's see if he can put together another win streak. So, <clears throat> what do I think is going to happen in, in this fight? Let's take a look. Let's take a bit of a closer look at these fights and see if we can pick up on, on any patterns. 
So Ty Tuvasa versus Sergei Pavlovich. Pavlovich just did to Tuvasa what he does to everyone else. He basically just landed the cleaner, harder punches than his opponents. Ty really didn't have any chance to land anything on Pavlovich and just gets completely knocked out. So you can say that Ty did the worst out of Aspinall, Blades, and himself. Like, he just got overrun by uh, Pavlovich. And, yeah, Ty got brutalized in this fight. Just, like, hard punch after hard punch. Is what happened in this fight going to happen against Tybura? I don't think so, because Tybura doesn't have that kind of power or that kind of good form in his punches. Against Derek Lewis, Ty showed a really good resiliency, not only to wrestling, but also to just getting punched with giant shots as he has in the past so you know he got hit by big shots and then was able to come back and you know land a giant elbow against Derek Lewis putting him face first onto the canvas out cold first time we've really seen Derek Lewis get knocked out cold like that so that was a one of Ty's best performances in my opinion against Cyril Gaon Ty got completely destroyed and again it was reminiscent to what Volkov did to him where Gaon is just clearly the superior striker and is able to stay out of the way of Ty's power shots. And then Gon could have easily decisioned him, but he took calculated risks to land his own power shots and was able to crack Ty's chin in the third round. But that was after having hit him with tons of power shots to the head, head kicks, and very damaging shots to Ty's body and legs. So Ty was broken up in that fight. All kinds of ways. And then, yeah, against wrestlers, Ty Tuvas is not great. He got taken down by Derek Lewis, though he was able to get back up. He was just outpointed by Volkov and was taken down and just looked like a complete fish out of water on the ground. So if Tybura can get Ty to the ground, I think that he has ways of winning the round easily. But I don't think that Ty is going to just lie there and take the damage like he did against Volkov because Ty was really out of shape in the Volkov fight and he was just beaten up on the feet by Volkov. So I think Marcin Tybura is going to have to do that to Ty in order for his wrestling to be successful. And yeah, Ty was just, if you're getting choked out by an Ezekiel choke, you know your ground game isn't up to the level that it needs to be to be in the UFC. So against Tom Aspinall, Tybura just got blown out of the water he got head kicked and then Aspinall just hit him with a beautiful almost a jab and it just knocked him out cold not not really cold but stunned him and then Mark Goddard stepped in and stopped the fight against Alexander Romanov Marcin Tybura kind of just let him gas himself out and then was able to take over the fight from there and win by a decision and against Volkov Tybura's wrestling wasn't really effective and he just got outstruck by the longer, more technical fighter. Again, Volkov was able to find those front kicks on Tybur's body like he was against Aspinall. And against Greg Hardy, Tybur was able to let himself gas out and then was able to finish the fight from there. So this, this is the predicament. It's almost a striker versus grappler matchup where Tybur has the grappling, Taituvasa has the striking. Obviously, both guys can do both aspects of the game. But that's where they're probably going to have the higher likelihood for success if they f go for those strategies. So which strategy is more likely to occur? Is Tybura going to gas out Tai Tuivasa and then take him down, winning a decision, or TKOing him on the ground? Or is Tuivasa going to be able to knock out Tybura on the feet? Well, Tybura's grappling comes with a catch. It really is only effective when his opponent is tired and just kind of ready for the fight to end against Walt Harris. Walt Harris punched himself out. Granted, Tibera did take him down, but it was only because of the fact that Walt Harris was so tired because he put everything into the first four minutes of that fight that Tibera was able to actually finish him on the ground. Same with Greg Hardy. Greg Hardy put everything he had into ground and pounding Tibera in round one and then was exhausted in round two. Same with Romanov and... Same with Ivanov. Tybura's striking can be good if he is just a better striker than his opponents. So against Alexander Romanov, he was just a better striker. But he really wants his grappling to be successful when he can tire his opponents out and then take over the fight from there. Have we really seen Taitu Vasa get tired out? Well, we've seen him damaged, but we haven't really seen him get tired out. His fights are just a little too quick for that. 
The closest you can say to him being tired out was against Alexander Volkov, but that was also because Volkov was punishing Tied to Avasa with good, clean, fundamental striking, breaking down Ty's leg, breaking down him in the body, and landing punches to his face every time Ty would do anything, pretty much. So I don't really see Marcin Tiberius wrestling being super effective against Tai Tuvasa because I don't think Ty is going to be as tired out as we've seen Tiberius' other opponents be. We've never even really seen him get punch himself out in rounds in round one. He has no, he has multiple knockouts in round two and round one. Granted, if he gets past that, then the likelihood of getting of him getting a knockout is extremely small. But I do think that Taito Vasa has a very good chance of knocking out Marcin Tibera in round one or two. And why do I say that? Not only because Taito Vasa has good knockouts in round one and two. Marcin Tibera doesn't necessarily have a lot of knockouts in round one and two in terms of knockout losses. He got knocked out against Tom Aspinall in round one. But we have seen his opponents put on near 10-8 rounds in round one against him. Greg Hardy beat the hell out of him. Walt Harris was was beating the hell out of him until Tiberio got his hands on him and was able to take him down. Alexander Volkov just was better than him over the course of 15 minutes. Romanov almost put on a 10-8 round against Tiberio. And of course, Tom Aspinall beat him up in round one. Again, it's not really the case of Pyotr Jan where he'll take the round off to kind of assess his opponent and try to figure out ways to win. It's really just a case of his opponents being better than him in round one and Tiberio being tough enough and having good enough cardio, wrestling, and defensive skills to remain in the fight until his opponents crumble against him. And then he's there to take advantage of them being tired out. So really the question is, is Tai Tuvasa's onslaught in round one and early round two going to be enough to overcome Tiberio's defense and defensive toughness. I don't think that Tybura's I don't think that Tybura's defense and toughness is going to be enough to survive Tai Tuivasa's attack. And while I think that a round one knockout for Tai Tuivasa is on the table, I'm going to be leaning more towards round two because I do think Tybura might be able to take enough of Tai's punches to survive the round. He might even get a clinch on Tai Tuivasa and try to take him down. But if he does take Tai Tuivasa down, I don't think that Tai is going to be exhausted enough to just lay there and let Tybura TKO him or submit him. I think that Tai is more likely to survive the round, get back to his feet, and then when round two starts, just start off where he ended round one and start beating the hell out of him and probably knock him out. We've seen Tai Tuivasa get good round two knockouts before, and I think that it is likely that he knocks out Martin Tabura. I love both of these fighters. I don't really want to see either of them lose, but this is not a great main event in the heavyweight division. I mean, both guys are coming off of losses. Both guys are clearly not the top of the heavyweight division and aren't really going to get there anytime soon without major changes to their games. So Taitu Voss is the minus 130 favorite right now. And while I'm not going to say that that is a steal, I think that Taitu Vasa has a much clearer path to victory than Marcin Tibero does. Just think about it. Taitu Vasa just has to land big shots on Tibero in round one and two, something that the vast majority of Tibero's opponents that have beaten him or have lost to him, have done to Tibera. What does Tibera need to do to win? He needs to survive that onslaught from Tai Tuvasa, which is much easier said than done. And then he needs to somehow start landing the cleaner strikes on Tai, again, easier said than done, and start taking him down and trying to land ground a pound, which isn't something we've seen Tibera do against opponents unless they've been exhausted after trying to finish him in round one. And we haven't really seen Tai Tuivasa ever get exhausted against his opponents. He just doesn't really try that hard because he has that one-punch knockout power. So while it is possible for Marcin Tabura to survive the onslaught in round one, just start landing good body kicks, taking Tai Tuivasa down, engaging in the clinch, trying to land jabs, just long distant punches to stay out of Tai's, to stay out of Tai's range, I don't see that being likely, and I am going to go with a round to knockout and i think i'm going to bet three units on this 
prediction, maybe not around two knockout, but just tied to Avasa in general because at minus 130, it does seem to be a very good bet. And I would say maybe keep an eye on this fight. If it goes past round two, maybe you engage in some live betting and switch the odds over to March and Tabura. Unless you're worried that round one was a 10-8. But anyway, not the greatest fight the UFC could put on in the world. But it should be entertaining. Just wish it wasn't the main event. And wish it wasn't one of the best fights on the on the card. Um, thanks for watching, everyone. Let me know your predictions in the comments down below. And like, subscribe, comment if you want more content like this. And enjoy the fights. Everyone have a great day.